My name is Leah, and today we'll be talking about my delivery as well as some information about my son. So I'll start off with the information about my son. He was born six weeks early, so instead of the 25th of September, he was born on the 16th of August of 2019. He was born five pounds, six ounces, and he was 19 inches long. He did suffer from jaundice. Um, he had jaundice for about a week and a half. And at the beginning of his life, he wasn't able to breathe on his own properly. So about a couple hours after his delivery, they eventually brought him to my room because he had finally been able to catch up on his and be able to breathe on his own. So by then, he was able to latch and eat properly, and he gained quite a significant amount of weight a couple, well, six weeks later. After he was born. When my water broke, I didn't know what to expect because I hadn't had my birthing class quite yet. I was supposed to actually have it on the 17th, so the day after Leon was born, but since he was born on the 16th, there was no point in going to the birthing class um, because by that point I had already had the baby. I would have already went through all the pain. I would have had to either choose epidural, no epidural, and I'll talk about that in a second. <clears throat> because they, had they gave, gave me Tocin to help with the group B strep that I had had to get rid of any infection that I had and they gave me a shot of steroid to help my son's lungs develop because since he was six weeks early his lungs hadn't fully developed yet so they wanted to speed up that process so when he was born he'd be okay on his own. And the epidural, I wasn't going to do epidural. I wanted to experience the birth all, all naturally, but due to the Pitocin that they had given me and the fact that I wasn't feeling my contractions at the time, it they had to give it to me to make my contractions more extreme so I could get them so it would force my body into going into labor. Because at the time, I wasn't going into it because my body was like, you're not ready to have a baby yet no, we're not going to push, we're not going to dilate, we're not going to do this, we're not going to do that, because it just wasn't ready. So they had to make it ready by speeding up the process, you know. Um, so about seven hours in, I was there from eight to about five, so actually, correction, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, one, two, three, four, five. So about nine hours in. Uh, I decided I needed the epidural. I was, the contractions were so bad, so painful. I couldn't breathe, I couldn't br talk, I couldn't do anything. It hurt to walk, it hurt to talk, it hurt to do anything. I was so nauseous, I was close to throwing up multiple times. I was so lightheaded from the pain that I physically could not move. If I moved, I wanted to pass out. Um, so once they gave me the epidural, I was fine. I was chill. I was cool. I was sitting there. I was talking to my boyfriend. I was talking to his cousin. I was talking to my boyfriend's mom. His I best was talking to his best friend and his best friend's wife. The doctors, the nurses, the whoever was in the room, I was fine. I was not in pain no more. I was relaxed, I was numb, all I could feel was literally a pressure in my butt. <laughs> I didn't know, I didn't know what else we were going to expect, I've watched YouTube videos, I've watched, I've talked to people who've had babies before, um, but I never really experienced or knew what that pressure was going to feel like, and it felt so weird to have that pressure. And so when that pressure happened, I was like, I can, I feel pressure like, in my butt. Um, is that normal? And the doctors were like, oh yeah, that's totally normal. That just means the baby's about to come and the baby's about to be here. And they checked me again. And when they checked me, I was about 10 centimeters dilated. And so I was just waiting for the doctors to get in the room. But this is where it gets interesting. So when I was about to give birth to this baby, I thought he was either going to be huge or he was going to be tiny. But no, he was a pretty good sized baby. He wasn't huge, but he wasn't super tiny either. But these doctors 
they were not paying any attention to me. They didn't know I needed to push, so I literally pushed on my own when I was ready. And so, because of this, I didn't tear like, hardly at all. And those of you who have had children before relate. You unless you didn't tear or you tore really majorly. But the fact that some doctors don't pay attention to when you need to push. And so you have to do it when you feel most ready. And calm. So when I pushed, I pushed for about 10 minutes until I was just felt done. I felt done pushing. And by that point, the doctors had finally looked at me. They finally noticed I wanted to push and I was on my last push. And as soon as I used all my effort and force and all the strength that I had left in my body to push, the baby came out. He was there. He was breathing. He was fine. He, Russell, my boyfriend, cut the umbilical cord and they cleaned him. And I feel like such a bad mom for this, but I didn't cry. Most women cry. Most men cry. I didn't cry. I don't know why. Maybe I was just in shock because this is my first baby. He was six weeks early. I was not prepared whatsoever for what this baby was going to bring. We hadn't set up anything for the house yet because we weren't expecting him for another six weeks. We didn't have the diaper bag ready. We didn't have our hospital bag ready. We didn't have the bassinet in the house. We didn't have his anything. Pretty much anything that we had was at his mom's. And so when I was in the hospital, they went to her house, brought everything from her house to our house. And they did what they could. But with such little time, they didn't get much done. So, I do recommend this. Be prepared. Always be prepared. I wish I was. I didn't think at all in the slightest that he was going to come so early. I thought I had more time. I was planning on packing my bag that week too. I was going to pack my bag, pack his diaper bag, move everything from his mom's house to our house, everything, get everything set up, make sure our house was clean, you know, get everything prepared. But I guess life throws curveballs and we don't always get to do what we want to do. So thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe in the below and please share and I'll see you guys back here soon.